What's up everybody, I'm Clint Grover with Never Done Industries and today we're going to talk about where Never Done even came from. Alright, to tell this story correctly I'm going to have to take us back a long ways in time, uh, back to when I was in college. Uh, that was really kind of when I first started getting seriously into cars. Uh, at that time I was really into the tuner scene uh, and that was really when I uh, that was when I really started customizing things uh, beyond just car stereo equipment. That's when I when I started changing you know suspensions and exhausts and intake systems and wheels and tires and all the stuff you know that you kind of start with on your on your first on your first car uh, that you're customizing. So anyway, uh, during that time, one of the really popular trends was to uh, fiberglass and paint some of your interior panels and, and build custom fiberglass parts. Uh, the problem was is that none of us had any money. Uh, and so, you know, we kind of had to just do with what we had. And so myself and one of my friends, uh, his name's Ron Bircher, and uh, anyway, we, we decided we were going to try to figure this fiberglass thing out so that we could hook our cars up, you know, on the cheap. And so we went down to the local auto parts store, and, and he actually is the one that started this whole thing. Uh, and anyway, we went down there and we bought one of the little Bondo fiberglass kits that you can buy down there. Still to this day, you can buy those. And we just started figuring it out. And this is before YouTube, if you can believe that. Uh, for all of you young kids out there and anyway uh, we started messing with this fiberglass stuff and we were trying to figure out how to make it work so that we could make our own our own cool parts uh, at that time we wanted to be able to make body kits and stuff for our cars and there weren't body kits for our cars and so what we figured is that we could buy a body kit from something else and then graft it into our cars and this is with no knowledge whatsoever of, of how this stuff works so anyway, he started messing with it, and he had a, a little Mazda 626 at that time. It was a 96, and uh, he he figured it out. He he made it happen. Uh, it was kind of an entry level deal, but he was able to build a body kit for his car, and that was a big deal to us, you know. And so I really wanted to learn how to do it. And so I I, uh, I was watching what he had done, and I was tinkering myself, and and I did a whole bunch of projects, uh, you know, along the way, a lot of little, a little this and that type things, and and I really enjoyed myself, and I really enjoyed fiberglass, and I really enjoyed creating custom parts that I thought were better, you know, than whatever was out there, or you know, something that was available to me that wasn't available to everybody else. I liked having something that was that was custom, and anyway. Uh, so I did that for several years and, and kind of honed my skills and and it was just as a hobbyist. That was really all that it was. And so uh, fast forward several years later uh, to 2007 and at that time I was working with a guy uh, at an oxygen and medical supply place. We did oxygen and uh, hospital beds and stuff like that. Uh, it was It was kind of a crappy job and both of us, you know, we were both looking for something something more. Uh, you know for our lives and we wanted to create something that was going to be able to bring you know a better a better life to, to ourselves and our families and stuff and so we started thinking about what we could do and we were coming up with all kinds of different things he's a hardcore music guy his name's Warren Garner and we were trying to figure out how to do a radio station all kinds of stuff and uh, we got thinking about it thinking about it thinking about it and we were trying to figure out okay well what what do we have what can we do what are we good at you know and Finally, uh, one day it popped into my head and I thought, well, I'm good at fiberglass. I know how to do that stuff. You know, I've done a lot of that stuff just on the side as a, you know, as a, as a hobby. And uh, at that time, I was really jonesing to just get back into it because I hadn't done it for a little while and I really wanted to create something. And so we talked about it a little bit and, and we decided, all right, we're going to give this a shot. And so we started doing, you know, research and things uh, on on the different processes that are involved in in you know making your your uh, and they call it a plug, uh, your master, your original part. And anyway, you make your your original part, and then we were trying to figure out once you have that, well, how do you turn it into a mold, and then how do you put it into production and and make a production part out of it? And it's quite a process, but you know, it's 
we have the internet these days and so it's not that hard to figure out anything and so you know if you've got a little bit of drive a little bit of motivation you know you get after it, you get it done so anyway we started looking it up and we we got some training videos and things like that just to make sure we were doing everything you know professionally and not just screwing around and so uh at this time it was it was uh, winter time and here in idaho our winters don't screw around you know i mean we're talking well below zero and lots of snow and all that kind of crap and so uh fiberglass is is something that requires a controlled environment and you're not supposed to go below 55 degrees uh fahrenheit for your resins and things and and we we had all the odds stacked against us but we had drive and we had motivation we had a determination to make something happen and so uh, we set up a single one of those portable uh, carports. The it's like a little framework, and then you have the the. It's not even canvas. I don't even know what the material is right offhand, but it's like a plasticky material, like a vinyl maybe, that goes over the top of it, and then it zips shut. And that wasn't even mine. That belonged to my stepdad. I borrowed the thing from him uh, because he wasn't using it. And so we set that thing up in my backyard. I didn't have a garage. I didn't have a shop. I didn't, I didn't have anything to be able to, to work in. But we needed a place that was covered from the, the elements so that we could start prototyping on a car. Uh, you know, start making some parts for something. And so uh, we, we got that part figured out. And then we decided, all right, well, what are we going to use? Well, the Alero, you know, the never done Alero that you've seen. Um, we decided we were going to go ahead and use that and uh, we were going to make something for that car. And so we started going to the different forums and all that kind of stuff, figuring out what we're going to make. And that's a whole nother story. I'll tell you about that another time. But anyway, we decided we we're going to do this fiberglass thing. We we're going to start building these parts. And so then, uh, you know, it was kind of at a point where we needed a name. What are we going to call this thing? Well, my last name is Grover. His last name is Garner. And for some reason, we liked the idea of it saying industries at the end. And so uh, we called it Grover Garner Industries. And that, but that kind of, kind of sounds stupid. And so we decided, well, we'll just shorten it. We'll call it GGI, you know. And so uh, I do a little bit of graphic artwork and stuff. And I do a lot of photoshopping and, and that kind of thing. And uh, most of the photo edits and the little ads and all that kind of stuff, you see, I do those things. And so, uh, you know, I started doing all these little logos and all these graphics and stuff. And we did all kinds of, of different things, trying to decide, like, what's our image going to be? You know, we want to be cool. And so uh, we're messing with that and things. And, uh, you know, at that same time, I was still, you know, involved in real life. And uh, at the time, I was, I was married. And my father-in-law at the time, and good friend, uh, his name is Terry Milden. Uh, I was over there at his house. We were in his garage. And he had this beautiful 1969 uh, Mach 1 Mustang. Uh, it was uh, uh, blue. I don't remember the name of the blue, but beautiful blue car. And uh, it was actually featured on the on the cover of one of our calendars. I believe it was a 2013 calendar. Um, anyway, uh, we were over there, and uh, he was always tinkering on that thing. He had another Mustang out there too in his garage, and we were just having some garage time, just hanging out. And I asked him, uh, "This car is a show car. It's beautiful. I mean, it's it's." it's beautiful it's it's totally restored it's like a resto mod kind of uh, it doesn't have a lot of crazy things done to it but it's it's a car that most people would consider a finished car and i asked him he was talking about oh i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do this and that and i said well why are you why are you doing that it's isn't this thing done or when is it ever going to be done you know and he looked me dead in the eyes and he said they're never done and that just set the light bulb off and i said oh man that makes so much sense because realistically they are never done you talk to anybody who is into customizing cars and into the custom car even motorcycles trucks you know boats anything that you can customize any automotive thing and realistically a lot of other things that you can customize they're never done uh, there's always going to be some new part some new gadget some change some this some that you know keep up with the times make it do something better uh, whatever you know there's always going to be something that you're going to want to change and that's part of what makes it so great you know that's part of what what makes this this hobby and this interest and you know and this passion uh worthwhile is that they are never done you know you you have something that you can that you can work on and and you can enjoy forever and so uh i knew it right at that moment as soon as he said that i knew that we were going to call the business never done uh and then of course we had to put the industries on the end because for whatever stupid reason me and warren were stuck on that 
on that freaking industries thing. And so we decided, all right, it's going to be called Never Done Industries, or I did. And so I get a hold of Warren, and I tell him, oh, man, oh, man, I tell him the story about it. And, and he's totally on board. He's like, hell, yeah, dude, that's so cool. And, and, uh, and so we decided, all right, it's Never Done Industries. And so we started messing with some logos and stuff for that. You know, we had little NDI and all kinds of stuff. And we we're just trying to kind of create our image, you know, and, and we wanted it to be something different. We wanted it to be something that everybody else wasn't doing, you know. I mean, at that time, uh, there was so much, uh, so much the same, so many things that were not different, you know. I mean, you'd look through, I used to have subscriptions to all the different magazines, you know. I had Import Tuner, I had Super Street, I had Hot Rod, I had, you know, all, all of the different car magazines and a couple of the truck magazines. And there just wasn't anything new happening, you know. I mean, like, everything just felt like a repeat of what was already out there. It felt like people were taking what was there and they were just massaging it. And it was all for the same cars. It was all the same applications, you know. A new Honda Civic came out. They, you know, they had a body kit and a hood and a spoiler and stuff for that. Uh, you know, a, a new uh, Nissan came out. You know, they had all that stuff for that. But what about all the other stuff? You know, what about all the stuff that everybody else drives and everybody else has and, and that and it was really really important to both of us that that we did something different that we did something that that you hadn't heard of and uh you know we wanted people to to look at our stuff and be like man that's crazy why why'd you guys do that you know that's nobody's doing that why'd you guys do that and so uh, we were, you know, kind of talking about that and things, and and that we wanted that to be our image, you know, something cool, something automotive, and something that people hadn't done and, and people hadn't seen before, you know. We wanted to bring something new, and so uh, we started messing with that. Well, uh, at that time, uh, I listened to a lot of rap music. I listened to a lot of different things, but you know, primarily it's either you know rap or country. And at that time, there was a song uh, by Slim Thug. Uh, where he talks about, uh, I, I believe the song is called You Ain't Heard of That. I'll post a link uh, to that video uh, down in the description below. So take a look at that if you if you care to, to know where this came from. But anyway, I was working on something and I happened to have, I happened to have that song playing in the background. And, you know, I, I was a fan of his music and things. And he was talking about, uh, you know, how all these different things uh they were new you know you hadn't heard of that you haven't heard of that or i haven't heard of that and and the way he said it was you ain't heard of that and or i ain't heard of that and he, he was he was talking about that and i thought man that totally fits you know that, that's what we're trying to do we're trying to do the things you haven't already heard of we're trying to do the things that you haven't already seen and so you know what better way to to show that you know as our as our mission statement than than in our logo and so i talked to warren again about it and i said what do you think about this and and i said what do you think if I, if we do the never done uh the words never done and then underneath it we put you ain't heard of that and he said you ain't heard of that what the hell does that mean and then i let him listen to that song and I was like, you see what I'm talking about? You know, this is this is exactly what we're talking about. Uh, this is what we're doing. You know, I mean, we're we're building parts for a freaking Alero. You know, what what is that? And we had all kinds of other plans too, uh, for doing different cars. All the stuff that you you know you see a lot of on the road, but there's there's just not parts available in the aftermarket for them. And so anyway, so it ended up being settled that that, that was going to be that was going to be the business, that was going to be the logo, and that was going to be you know the direction that we took. It was going to be never done, and and it was going to be you ain't heard of that. And so when you see the never done logo and you see the red writing underneath it, that's what that says: never done, you ain't heard of that. Uh, and you know that's really kind of kind of where it started. It started out with fiberglass composite parts. Uh, and and then it's kind of evolved into other things and and you know we we still you know the 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 composites are still a part of the business uh they haven't been a huge part of the business recently uh because we haven't had you know an adequate facility to be able to do those things but uh you know they're definitely they're definitely going to be becoming a larger part of the business soon uh because i'm going to be able to to be getting myself into a shop here again and and i'll be able to start pushing those things too uh, and so, you know, really kind of in a nutshell, you can look at it from there and you can look at it from here and you can see how far it's come. Uh, but that's where it came from. That's how it started. And, and I appreciate you stopping by to, to listen in. All right, that's it for today's vlog episode. Please don't forget to like and share the video. Also, take a look at our website, www.neverdoneusa.com. There might be something on there you like. 
And please subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date on all of our new videos. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.